Hey guys, hope everyone out there is doing well today. Uh, I was not really planning on doing another video today, but someone uh, asked if I would do a video about sending and receiving packages in the Philippines. And I thought that was a really good topic. It's something that people should be aware of. And uh, so I'll share with you some of my experiences with that. Uh, actually, when I lived in Manila and Angeles City, I really didn't have any huge problems with receiving packages through the mail. Now, when I was in Manila, most of the time, uh, I worked for an organization called the International Mission Board. I've explained that in other videos. Uh, we had an office, and when someone wanted to send something to me, they would send it to a lockbox, a lockbox, mailbox kind of thing that went to uh, that office, or it, it went to a location, and then members from uh, the office, the staff, would go check that uh, ever so every so often. And I do remember having to pay taxes or import taxes or fees, whatever the heck you want to call it, when my parents would uh, send something to me. But, you know, generally speaking, what I did is I just dealt with that. Uh, what I would do is I would have my dad when he was sending something in a box. He would uh, he would tape it up, just put a lot of tape on it. That would hopefully discourage people from trying to open it or make it to where I could tell if they had opened it. And I, uh, you know, I, I got things that way. It wasn't that big of a deal for the most part. I think I also used to tell him to write books on the description. That way, it would be something that hopefully people wouldn't. The, the people in the Philippines wouldn't try to open up and get to because books are not not that valuable. You know, if you wrote if you wrote iPhone on there, then obviously <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. So anyway, um, that was Manila, and when I lived in Angeles, I didn't have a big issue with receiving mail. When people would send like a card or something, it would take two to three weeks for it to arrive, and I do remember at least one time. Uh, asking my dad to send some supplements to me for uh, my cholesterol and I did have to go to the post office to get it but I think what I paid was only it wasn't anything I mean it was like 20 40 pesos something like that it was nothing now uh, we did have a different experience in trying to send some things to my wife's family a few months back we tried to send some vitamins to them so we put it in a box and quite a few bottles of vitamins so it was kind of heavy and I don't remember exactly what I paid at the post office. I did some type of um, international shipping rate with tracking but it was it was not cheap and it arrived in the Philippines after two or three weeks but it just sat there in customs. I, I could check the mail, I could check the status of that item online through the post office and it, it, I forgot how many weeks it sat in customs, but it seemed like it was forever. To me, it was, uh, it was ridiculous, to be honest. And then once they finally released it, I think I sent an, in, an inquiry through email or internet or whatever to ask the post office to check up on this item. And once they finally released it and tried to send it to my wife's family, they wanted an additional like 2,000 peso to receive that item. And so uh, I'm saying all this to tell you that each step along the way when you're sending something to the Philippines, it can go wrong. It can be kind of a crapshoot. And each step along the way can be subject to some form of corruption. Uh, there was a really big issue a while back of people opening up boxes. And I think and I hope the uh, current president's going to stop that. Uh, so, all this to say, to a certain extent, it's a crapshoot. I mean, you don't know exactly how long it's going to take, and you never can be 100% 100% sure it's going to arrive. Uh, I'll give you some tips that I hope will help. If you're going to send you some type of letter, you may want to send it through FedEx instead of the mail. Or if you're sending it through the mail, what you want to do is have some way where it's uh, tracked or confirmed receipt or something like that, verified, uh, however you want to say it. You don't want to just drop something in the mail and send it to the Philippines uh, because if they see USA on it, there's always going to be the temptation for somebody to open that up. 
So if you if you are going to send something through the mail, have some way of tracking it, or maybe sending it through FedEx, something like that. Now another option that you can look into, let's say you're going to send a box, you're wanting to send some gifts like clothing or uh, vitamins as I mentioned, or books, or chinelas, flip-flops, anything like that. What I would recommend you look into is get online and look for some Balik buy-in boxes. And if you are, hopefully, if you can get in touch with some Filipinos near where you live and ask them which company they use, they'll tell you. And uh, uh, Balik buy-in boxes, you, you, you simply buy it according to size and pay a set fee for that size box. Most of the time they do not charge according to weight. So for example, a box this size is, let's say it's $100, and that includes the shipping to the Philippines. And if it weighs a pound, if it weighs 10 pounds, it doesn't matter. You just you just charged one fee. Now the thing with uh, Balik Bayan boxes, normally, as far as I know, those of you who are uh, watching this can correct me, normally you pay them and all that nonsense about uh, people trying to collect additional fees, these companies usually have worked that out. So you pay that set fee for the Balik Buying Box, and they will get it to the doorstep, normally, of the people you're wanting to send it to. The biggest disadvantage of the Balik Buying Box is that it's not going to be a fast process. It may be a month, it may be two months. I mean, it's not going to get there quickly, but again, it's going to get there and there shouldn't be any additional fees. So uh, those are my uh, recommendations to you. Again, it's just one of those things you have to be very careful about. And you cannot assume that especially if you just send something regular mail or send it away that it is not tracked, you cannot assume that it's going to uh, make it there. So uh, that's, that's some of my advice regarding sending and receiving packages in the Philippines. If you want, you can leave a comment below if you have another suggestion that I have not thought of, but uh, those are some of my experiences and suggestions.